We are having here today our second coffee talk with law students. Um, and when the COVID crisis began, we really thought that there was a need and there was, you know, an opportunity um, for our members to stay connected and to for us to be able to also just check in, see how everyone is doing, um, give a little bit of information and some updates about the MSBA because it was such a different time um, when we went into March of this year versus what we thought the year was going to look like. And we started off by doing these chats with um, our 30 sections. And we, you know, held so many section uh, coffee chats, some sections we even held multiple chats, um, we had speakers for some of those. And it was just nice for people to see one another speak informally and also use it as a way to get answers about what was happening in court, what was happening on the ground, because everything really was different from jurisdiction to jurisdiction, day to day, week to week. Um, so it was a very positive experience. And then we also um, have law student ambassadors that serve in a capacity with us here at MSBA. And as Angela and I were working with them and Doris, uh, we thought it'd be great to have the same kind of opportunity for all of you. And so we put this together a couple of weeks ago. We had the first chat. Um, and we have a second one here today. And I just wanted to start off by giving a little bit of background um, on some updates from the MSBA. Um, and then we do have several of our volunteer leaders here from MSBA committees and sections. Um, and we'll, we'll hear from them um, talking about diversity and inclusion committee. We also have some representatives from our young lawyers section to give some networking and interview tips. And then of course, we'll have discussion. And at any point, if you'd like to jump in, a question or comment, um, you can post in the chat, uh, which Angela is monitoring, or just go off of mute and feel free to jump in. So the MSBA has uh, been really busy, as, as I've said, uh, since the COVID crisis began. And while early on, a lot of our uh, work was just getting answers, messaging, um, you know, connecting with the judiciary, connecting with Governor Hogan's office, um, looking at orders, trying to get clarity for our members and for students. Um, we've continued those advocacy efforts, but we've also tried to make sure that we're providing information to members and to you as law students. So we continue to have free COVID related webinars that are put on by our different sections. Um, those are available in our MSBA YouTube channel. Um, and maybe Angela, you could post a link to that so people can check those out. Um, and those we've made free to the entire profession. And at this point we have over, you know, over 30 of those on a variety of topics and I encourage you all to, to take a look at those when you get an opportunity. And if you have a request for any upcoming webinars or you have a speaker that you think would be great to help people um, with a COVID-related issue, please let me know, um, or Angela, and we'll connect you with our Director of Learning, and we provide all the preparation and the technology support so that um, you, know, you can get that information. And it was really helpful, especially um, our taxation section, our business section, employment law, all these emerging issues that were coming up. Um, people really benefited from on the ground um, you know, information from many of our section leaders. So encourage you to take a look if you can there. We have messaged a lot and we have sent out emails twice a week um, that you know, pull together our, our direct information that we wanna share related to COVID and original content, as well as just COVID updates and information from what we've collected and put together. Um, so if you're not already on that email list, please um, just send me or Angela a note here and we'd be happy to add you. Um, and that's been very helpful in getting information out quickly to, to everyone. And we have 30 sections uh, that are very active at the MSBA. And uh, right now we're in, you know, deep into planning for the fall and planning for the upcoming year. Um, we are virtual at this time with our events, um, but as I said, they're still busy. They still are planning all of those events. So if you haven't already taken a look at our website, to see what some of these sections are doing or a calendar to see what's coming up. I encourage you to take a look there and you can register directly online for, for all of our events. We have an upcoming bar journal that we publish every quarter. 
Um, and the last one that we published in the middle of the COVID, uh, just a few weeks into the COVID crisis, we made available to the entire profession, to the public at large. Um, and the next issue that we have coming up in September is looking at the evolution of the legal profession. We'll also have that posted on our website for our members. So we'll you know, encourage you to take a look at that, that resource as well. And we decided to offer uh, our entire learning library for free um, through the end of June. So we did it basically from April to the end of June to the entire profession, um, not just to our members, because we did see a need for this kind of learning and opportunity. And we had a very good response there. So we have now extended that to all of our active members. So they will have access to most of our 90 minutes or less programming, and that'll be all the way through the end of this year. So again, if you're a member, if you're a law student, um, you have a free membership um, while you're in law school or up to a year after you know, you've know you graduated from law school. So encourage you to just sign up and become a member so that you can then easily just log into the system and you'll be able to click through and have a great opportunity to do virtual learning um, through the end of December. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to me directly afterwards. But it's a really nice opportunity, and we've opened it up um, as of the beginning of this month. Uh, one other event that I wanted to let all of you know about is our Legal Excellence Week, uh, which we have planned for the week of November 9th. Uh, you may have seen some messages about this, but it's the first ever event that we're having that we're calling Legal Excellence Week, and it's pulling together a lot of our regular fall programs into one week. Um, so we ha usually have our Conference of Bar Presidents, we have some of our advanced learning institutes for property, tax, and business, and we have family and criminal law updates and networking events. Um, so we'll be providing this all in a virtual format and some of the events you can already sign up for now. Um, and we'll also do some bundles as well if you'd like to uh, go to more than one event. And we'll also have some virtual ways to network and to continue to stay connected. So we'll um, share that information with you. But again, it's just a nice opportunity while we're keeping everyone safe uh, but continuing to do the programs that we want to make sure are available to you. And as I mentioned, as a law student, you are eligible for a free membership um, through law school and for the first year after law school. Um, and you will have entry into the young lawyer section um, as well as three additional sections. So um, it looks like, you know, uh, Daniel has, you know, is here and is kind of showing us that that's a great way that you can get involved by connecting to one of the sections early on. Um, and, you know, it's just another opportunity. If you haven't already signed up, please just join and we're happy to provide ongoing support for you. I believe we have Lisa Kaplan here on our line as well. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Sally. How are you? Good. And Lisa is our um, director of our lawyer assistance program. So I did want to turn to her for a few minutes um, to give us an update on her program and some information for the group here. Yes. And I was also asked to give you guys some tips on managing stress and anxiety. So I'll do that at the end. We have on our COVID page, we have a health and wellness page that has a lot of resources. It has emergency resources. It also has different exercises that you can do. It's worth checking out. There's a lot of videos. There's a lot of non-traditional stress management exercises and just a lot of really great information on there. So I would check that out. Also, I possibly have met some of you. I am in both law schools or I was in both law schools. Now I'm virtually in both law schools on a regular basis during orientations. I've been in professionalism classes. I've come into clinic classes. If you're in a class, even virtually, and you think it would be something that would be helpful, I'm happy to come in, talk about managing stress during this time, and um, it's something we do on a regular basis. I also have done office hours at um, University of Maryland. I offered to do that at, at UB as well. We're going to be doing that virtually this year. It's just kind of a way to drop in and have short sessions to talk about what's going on. They're going to be completely confidential, and we're working that out. So um, there's a lot of different types of wellness programs that I'm putting on for that. So the Lawyer Assistance Program, if you don't know about it, it is free, it is confidential, it's for a variety of concerns. So anything from stress to 
improving your wellness to substance abuse, mental health, dealing with things virtually right now and all the stress that's going on, we can, I can help with that. We are available to all Maryland lawyers, judges, and law school students. And we're available in any state. If you are distance learning from New York, we are able to help you with that as well. And um, so I know people are learning at all different places. I'm sorry, my dog is barking and hasn't done it all day until right now. So that's part of being virtual. But no matter what state you're in, we can assist you. So that is something, I, the question I've been asked by people. So we are able to help you. We will make a referral and assist you if you need counseling. We also will offer, obviously, virtual counseling. It's available. If you are, if you have a history of substance abuse or mental health, and right now you do need to disclose that on the bar application, please connect with me because I can make that a smoother process. We don't have anything to do with the actual decision making, but typically they will bounce somebody back who maybe has worked with a psychiatrist for years or has been in treatment for substance abuse. So if you have been doing that, please don't wait till the 11th hour. Please get with me and we can help to make that process a little bit uh, smoother. We also offer, um, once you are barred, we offer financial assistance for mental health and substance abuse. So it's a great uh, program that we have and a fund that we have available. So I was asked to do some tips on stress management, on managing anxiety. I think one of the biggest things is limit the amount of information overload that you may be getting. Watch your social media and how much time you're looking at the news. A good key to if this is stressing you out and causing anxiety is to look at how your body is affected by this. If you notice that you are watching the news and your heart is racing, that's a good time to turn it off and maybe set just 15 minutes for you to catch up on what's going on. If you notice that social media is stressing you out, that is another good time to maybe limit some contact with certain people that may be triggering some anxiety reactions. So just be aware of that and aware of how much time you're spending on social media. Also, when I work with lawyers, they typically have to exercise for an hour and a half or they don't. I can't tell you how many times a lawyer, law school student has told me if they can't exercise for an hour and a half that they're not going to. So I say, look at exercise moments and building movement into your day. Make sure you're getting up. It can be walking up and down your stairs. It can be walking, if it's safe to, to walk outside, it's, it's um, you can go outside, you can go for a short walk. You can, there are many videos out there that are five, 10 minute workouts. You can get a good workout in five or 10 minutes if you do the right kind of workout. Don't feel like it has to be one extreme or the other. Just look at keeping move, keep movement in your life and it will definitely help to reduce your anxiety. And then the last one is look at what your anchors are. Anchors are things in our life that don't change typically no matter what is going on. It may be your daily cup of coffee. It might be the sunrise. It may be taking your dog for a walk. Look at what your anchors are and when you feel stressed, even thinking about what your anchors are may actually reduce your anxiety. And don't forget to call because I'm here, I'm available, Lawyer Assistance Program is available and we're happy to help in any way that we can. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. I just wanted to open it up if anyone has any immediate questions for Lisa. Um, I'd love to have those now. Otherwise, you know, Lisa, if you want to post your information in the chat, um, if people can follow up with you after. I have a question for Lisa. Sure. Lisa it's, it's Alyssa. So I've been talking to students who have been really struggling about um, focusing. And so, you know, they're home, we're all in that same place. Home distractions are, you know, a few steps away. Um, how, any tips that you have on how to maintain good focus, be productive, but also, you know, balanced. I actually just wrote a tip sheet on maintaining your motivation and uh, energy while working remotely, which is the same whether you're studying or you're working at home. I can post that in the chat and um, you can also reach out to me at lisa at msba.org. I'm happy to, to give you that as well. I need to find that tip sheet to be able to post it for you. But I will put my contact information in the chat. But there are a lot of really good tips on there. And I think the first one is not beating yourself up when you're not feeling as motivated. I think a lot of times we spend a lot of energy, and I work with law students for a long time, 
and we put a lot of energy into why something is happening, why we're not, why we're not motivated, why we're having a hard time getting started. And I think that's part of it is to look at how to redirect that energy. And um, there's a ton of tips I have in that tip sheet that I that just went out. So I will put my contact information in there. I will Got it. then also try to find, did someone put that in there? Yeah. Yes, and is it okay if we share that with students more widely? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Great. Can we put in the tip sheet itself, actually? Yes, I put the, ah. the post online. He's quick. Okay. Yes, absolutely. You can you can post that to anybody. I'm also happy to provide you with any information, anything that I post that um, you want to put out to students as well. Great. Thank you, Shelley. Thanks. And and Lisa's information that she's been posting, we do include in our uh, two weekly emails. So if you're not already on that list, like I said, just let us know. We're happy to add you to that distribution. The website on the Lawyer Assistance Program also has the tip sheets that I've written in the past. So you can look through there and see the tip sheets as well. They should be up to date pretty much. Thanks, Lisa. You're welcome. I'm going to turn now to Angela Monroe um, to give us a bit more information about our student ambassadors. Angela? Thanks, Shelley. Um, so we started the Student Ambassador Program last year as a pilot program. Um, this year, we had a lot of um, applicants, and we narrowed it down to two from UB, and we actually have one from Charleston School of Law. Um, today, we have Pernita Farf. She is in her final year at UB. She started with us early this year um, and had some really great events planned prior to COVID. Um, Pernita, would you like to share some of your experience during COVID challenges with virtual learning or any issues that are important to you? Um, sure. As Angela said, there was, um, you know, I was excited to be um, accepted as one of the student ambassadors and was kind of really on fire um, to <laughs> get started and share a lot of the information that the MSBA has to offer. Um, because my first, actually my first semester, I got involved um, by way of one of my advisors. And um, so I, I knew that um, a lot of other students maybe didn't know everything that MSBA had to offer. And so I was hoping to be able to, um, you know, spread that at least among UB, if not beyond. Um, and so, yeah, with COVID, you know, as you know, changed everything for everybody. And so we just kind of shift, shifted gears. And so instead of putting on live events, um, I have been assisting different facets of the MSBA. Like I work with the Access to Justice um, Task Force for the COVID that was um, a part of the Attorney General's um, plan for, uh, you know, for COVID, COVID issues. And then um, I also got a chance to work with, or I'm starting to get a chance to work with some of the sections um, just to, you know, help either spread the word or, um, you know, share information. Um, otherwise, yeah, it's been challenging, but I think um, the university has really made its, you know, as much of an, its best effort to transition us from uh, in live or in-person classes to online, an online platform. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of uh, resources spent on technology. Um, I actually think that they've discovered that, you know, law school being probably the last industry to go, you know, kind of online or even doing hybrid, that they realize that it's possible even for law school. And even going forward, I think that we may, um, you know, since so much time, money and resources and innovation has been spent, um, I think that, you know, hybrid might actually be a next phase for law school and beyond. All the other um, programs are not new to online education, but I think for the law school community that we might be forced to lean that way as well. So I think the challenges have been um, met by the, you know, administrations, the leaderships in the school. Um, and, you know, I'm just continuing to try and, um, especially now, uh, let students know that, you know, it's hard to network when we're not in person. And so the take hold of everything the MSBA has to offer, um, you know, we're doing a lot of virtual networking as um, Angela and I think Shallow mentioned earlier. And so, yeah, as much as, you know, we can share the information and I know our, um, our 
um, LCDO office is also, career office is also sharing a lot of information for MSBA. So we're kind of hitting them from both ends, from the admin side and the student side. So it's, it's, it's been a challenge, but it's actually working out. Great, thank you so much. Shally. Thanks, Angela. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, Pernita's done a great job uh, this year. And if anyone has any other questions or again, wants to connect with her offline, maybe you could share your contact info here um, so people can reach out to you directly. Um, because I think that the experience you've had and some of the ideas you have about how things are going to look in the next couple of months, I think there's a lot of interest in, in continuing that discussion, either with your peers or I think even with a lot of our um, attorneys that are, that are here you know, uh, on the call. So thank you for sharing your perspective. So next, I'd like to turn to um, the chairs of our Diversity and Inclusion Committee. And the MSBA has several committees that include a lot of our volunteer attorney leaders, um, and they help to sort of shape our organization and some of the initiatives that we're focused on. Um, and so from the Diversity and Inclusion Committee, we have the chairs here today, Daryl Tarver um, and Pilar Nichols. And I'd like to turn to them now to give you some information about some of the MSBA programs and about the committee, as well as some of their own experiences. Hi, good afternoon. I'll start. I'm, I'm Daryl Tarver, uh, as Shally mentioned. Um, I am an alum of the University of Baltimore School of Law, along with uh, Jess Gorski. Um, we were class of 2014, so I think you do have that right, Jess. Um, I am in my second year as the co as a co-chair of the uh, MSBA's Diversity and Inclusion Committee. And um, for background, we are a relatively new committee. Um, we were started in the last five years. Um, as a standing committee um, in which we have annual um, status. And we, um, this year, um, are in a situation where um, we have a lot of focus and energy toward uh, diversity and inclusion, or I'll call it DNI for short, um, related issues. Uh, and so, you know, and that's in light of a, a number of different, uh, you know, things and, and current events. Um, obviously, we've had um, some tragic deaths of some, you know, people at the hands of, of police brutality and that sort of thing. Um, so those things have DNI implications, um, as does COVID-19 and the way that it disproportionately has affected um, different populations. Um, and so as the DNI committee, we are um, really trying to uh, do a couple of things. And one of them is to uh, to, to grow our, our, our kind of recognition and platform among the bar and among the profession. Uh, we want people to be aware of um, our committee, that it exists and the work that we're doing and that we are a resource for um, different uh, professionals relating to diversity and inclusion related issues. Um, we have um, the capacity to host discussions and to um, facilitate events um, that, that relate to DNI. Um, and, and we are, you know, I think going to be quite busy in that in that regard, um, especially this year, as I said, with with some of the eyes and, and ears uh, more open than they have been in, in the past. Um, uh, I will also say that um, I, I am, you know, a young lawyer with with six years in practice. And as um, a member and an active member of the MSBA, um, I've really enjoyed the opportunity to um, connect with different people in different practices really across the state. Um, I am uh, an associate now with DLA Piper um, and you know, being in kind of the larger firm environment, um, sometimes it can feel very insular in that you know, I am mostly interacting with colleagues, um, spending a lot of time um, doing work-related activities, um, but I don't have um, a ton of interaction often with um, lawyers that are outside of, of you know, my own practice. Um, so the MSBA has afforded me the opportunity to really get to know some people who do completely different things and to connect with them. And oftentimes it can be a, a source for um, 
you know, referrals and, and, you know, when people come to me with an issue and I have no ability to help them based on my practice, I can, you know, uh, refer the, uh, the matter or the, uh, the client to someone else who I've gotten to know through the MSBA. So I've enjoyed that. Um, as far as being um, the co-chair of the Diversity and Inclusion Committee, um, as I said, I'm in my second year of that now, and I've, I've enjoyed that from the, from the standpoint of being able to, um, you know, be in contact with, with people in different sections, um, different people from uh, local and specialty bars as well, um, and, and kind of to, to be a, a voice, you know, as it relates to um, helping, helping our um, bar association adhere to its values of diversity. Um, you know, the, the DNI commitment, uh, committee has a statement um, on its website that um, that says that it's, you know, um, it's committed to promoting and encouraging diversity and inclusion within the legal profession, which is reflective of the people it serves, um, regardless of race, color, age, gender, gender identity, disability, sexual orientation, marital status, or any other legal protected, legally protected characteristic. So as our committee, um, it's really charged with uh, making sure the MSBA stays true to that statement. And so I've, I've enjoyed, um, you know, the work that I've gotten to do in, in programming and, um, and, and, you know, communicating with other, um, you know, areas of the Bar Association and other professionals um, in, in trying to make sure that we, we adhere to that. Um, I, my co-chair is, is Pilar Nichols, so she will have some words as well. Hello, good afternoon. Um, I'm Pilar Nichols. I am a 2005 graduate of the Catholic University of America Columbus School of Law, and before that, um, a graduate of the best school in the world, uh, Penn State University. And um, I am um, actually now adjunct faculty at, um, at CUA Law. And I um, am a principal uh, attorney at the uh, law office of off at Kerman. I'm in the family law group and I am out of the Bethesda office. And actually, um, I am also on their recently um, reinvigorated diversity and inclusion committee uh, internally in, in our law firm. This is my first year as a co-chair of this committee. And I'm very excited to be doing that, especially with Daryl, who's um, a wonderful um, partner in this endeavor. And um, I was on the committee prior when it first um, started. Um, I am a first generation America, American. I was born here by one month. My family is um, originally from Chile and my first language is Spanish. Um, and I am very, very excited to be part of the Diversity and Inclusion Committee. And um, we hope to put on some wonderful programming, like Daryl said, and we are looking forward to um, trying to get a what we would call our signature event, where we want to go ahead and put on a big symposium. We want to do some great things. And we would love for um, law students as well as members of the bar to come and um, be part of it. Uh, the discussions that need to start happening now are what we are trying to get people comfortable with. Um, Daryl and I talk often about how we're going to move things forward. And one of the biggest things that we have discovered is that we have to make people comfortable to uh, in talking about race and diversity and inclusion and it's not all about race it's also about disabilities and it's about people of different sexual orientations or different um you know all different kinds of um all different walks of life so it's not just about um, one type of diversity it is about making um, the bar and hopefully the world, a more inclusive and diverse place so that everybody can be celebrated for their things. And so uh, many of our programming is geared towards celebrating diversity and inclusion, encouraging employers and people to uh, take those people, um, excuse me, to go and, and um, whatever, like the recruiters to like go and have those people go out and really market and look at um, diverse people from all different types of um, backgrounds, perspectives, and um, walks of life, and also um, retaining them um, as uh, part of their workforce. We want to start the conversations. We want people to be educated. People um, need to know why certain groups feel certain ways. Why is it that um, 
certain things um, affect some people more than others. And unless we're all talking about it and sharing and respecting each other's different perspectives, uh, we're never going to grow and learn and then understand and then be sensitive and then accept and then celebrate. And so um, those are kind of the things that we um, hope to accomplish at the end of this bar year with the um, wonderful things that we have planned that hopefully you will all find out about slowly and uh, attend. Thank you, Pilar, and thank you, Daryl. Um, I think that was a great summary and launching point and history about the committee. Um, and I know we have other MSBA members that are on here, so if they have any other um, input or, or any other comments, feel free to, to jump in now or um, to post anything in the chat. Um, but I think there's a lot more to come. And um, Daryl and Pilar are great communicators. And in our role, Angela and I will also be communicating out um, important information. So, you know, it's an ongoing conversation and there's a lot of good that's going to be coming out of that committee this year. So we will be sure to share all of that with you. I also uh, wanted to turn now to um, Liz Rosen and Jess Skorsky, who um, they, she introduced herself earlier, and they are um, in the leadership of the YLS uh, section. And again, that is a section that, that you would be eligible to automatically be on if you're in a law student membership or just your first year out of law school. So I'd like to turn to both of them now, um, and maybe they can give us some information on networking and interviewing in in this crazy year. So I'll turn to both of you. Jess, if it's okay, I'll start. Um, I'm Liz Rosen. It's nice to be with you guys this afternoon. As Shally said, I'm the uh, chair of the Young Lawyers section for what is going to be a most interesting year. Um, Angela had reached out to uh, me and Jess to talk about networking. How do we network in this environment? You're paying all this money to go to school, and the goal is to get a job. And how can you get meaningful work experiences and make those connections that are going to land you that first job when we're all stuck at home inside? So I will tell you that um, one of the first things that I saw during this time that I thought was really interesting and made me want to speak further to someone who had submitted an intern uh, internship application to my office was that they included that they are eligible to work remotely. I think that it's it would be really productive in this time if, there, if you know what kind of work you want to do to reach out to places that can provide that kind of work and tell them that you can work remotely. Offer to tell them what you can do for them remotely. The MSBA is offering all kinds of free CLEs right now. If you have the ability in your schedule, signing up for those CLEs and learning more about areas of law that you realize you may be super interested in or not um, is a great way to put that on a cover letter to say that you did these CLEs, that you're really trying to be engaged with the kind of law that you're looking to practice with whatever firm or agency you're uh, applying to. Um, furthermore, in those CLEs, they have chats just like the chat that's going on here in this coffee talk. You can meet members from the MSBA who are practicing attorneys who, you know, maybe they just need somebody for doc review, or maybe they're looking for an associate, or maybe they're looking to hire somebody for next summer. You never know who you're going to meet in one of those CLEs. And that can happen in something as simple as a chat box. So I can't express enough how much I think that those CLEs are a really good opportunity, not only for you to just learn, but to then put that towards something productive. Um, I will tell you the young lawyer section, we just began our bar year. We're in the planning phase for a lot of things. We do put on a lot of education and those types of um, online conversations, because that's what we're relegated to now, are usually uh, done in cooperation with more seasoned attorneys who are always happy to engage with young lawyers. So anytime that the uh, YLS is putting on programming, I would try and make room for it in your calendar. Uh, you never know what kind of connections you're going to walk out with there. And additionally, you know, I graduated from Maryland in 2012, so I've been out for a little longer now, um, but not too, too long. But we are starting to see young lawyers in all kinds of stages. A young lawyer is defined as someone who's 38 years or younger or in the first five years of their practice. And the reason I tell you that is because I sometimes feel like the word young lawyer is a misnomer, but there are all sorts of people looking for all sorts of other people in their practices of law within that section. And we're also, a, we're a safe space. So we welcome law students. We wanna hear from you. We wanna support you. We know this is a very trying time. So, you know, feel free to reach out to me, reach out to Jess, reach out to Daniel, reach out to Candace Miller from UB. 
Uh, Duke May is also on section council uh, with me and with Jess and with Daniel. And uh, we're, we just want to let you guys know that there, there are ways to make this time productive and effective, and we encourage you to take advantage of that. Yeah, um, I'll just pig piggyback on what Liz said, you know, for without even realizing it, coming to things like this is networking. You know, this is an opportunity to meet people who are, you know, going to be potential influences for you. Um, so taking advantage of things like this, YLS is going to be, which is young lawyer section, um, in addition to uh, educational events, I know a lot of our chairs are looking into creating some type of social based events even in light of COVID, um, to do them virtually, um, do even, uh, YLS does such a, such a wide array of events. Um, sorry, now I'm having the same issue with my dog. Um, but we, not just educational events, but social events and also, um, you know, volunteer events, social, uh, charitable events. Um, we do a lot to give back to the community and there's a lot happening right now that's out there that people are in assistance and in need during COVID. Um, and so, Participating in those events, coming to those events, taking advantage of those things is going to be crucial in terms of utilizing this time, I think, to network, to really meet other people, because how else are you going to do it? Um, I also, um, you know, being at, I'm, I'm an associate at White for Taylor, um, similar to, um, to Daryl, what Daryl had mentioned, you know, our firm is a little larger. Um, and I have, uh, in speaking to other colleagues and friends at other firms, I, I, I know that some firms are struggling um, in light of COVID. And I know that some, um, some, some are associate things and some things that they've done have been a little bit altered in light of COVID. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're not out there. Firms are trying, they are making efforts. And so reaching out to firms, just like Liz said, reaching out to find out what they have available essentially selling yourself to an extent to them to really, you know, make yourself a resource, make yourself invaluable to them um, is definitely something that I would recommend doing. Um, and in something that you can also do is, you know, as much as MSBA is amazing, there are so many different events and so many things happening, but also local bars. Um, local bars are also a great way to meet people who are right where you are. And that can be, and you can get involved even as a law student as well. Uh, but my best suggestion would be trying to take advantage of doing as many virtual events as possible so that you can try and make some efforts to connect with people at the events and after the events. Um, reaching out to people can be intimidating, I know, and especially in this climate, you know, you don't really get to meet people the same way as you would in an in-person event. Um, but it shows a lot of gusto on the part of especially a law student to reach out and make those connections and and be affirmative in that way. And so I think it goes a long way um, in terms of building connections and building relationships. So going forward, you know, if if anybody has any questions about any events that are happening through MSBA, through YLS, Liz and I are more than happy to provide you with any information that you need and put you in contact with people who might have direct contact or direct relationships to what you're looking for. Um, and for every law student that's on this, um, you know, I wish you guys luck this year and I wish you guys all the best as you go forward. I know it's going to be a little bit different, um, but it's going to be great no matter what. And so um, more than anything throughout this process, you're not alone. And that is just indicative of everything about the Maryland law community. You are never alone. You have an entire network of people that are always here to help you. So it's a great thing to have and to feel lucky to have in light of COVID. Thank you both so much. Um, I think that it's so helpful for people to hear that and to, to have that support and know, you know that there's, there's a light there and that there is opportunity there. Um, one question that I've heard and, and feedback that I've gotten from law students is, okay, we're not in a typical year. It's not a typical time. Who do I reach out to at the firm when the firm is all remote and you know I don't know if I have the right info for the usual person that would be handling this, um, you know, in terms of resumes and things like that. Do you have any tips about that? Um, I mean, on, on my end, I can say, um, and, and this is coming from um, working at numerous different types of firms. I'm starting from small solo practitioners to where I am now. 
Um, your best bet is honestly reaching out to an office manager or a, a managing partner. A lot of websites will have those people listed on their uh, on their websites directly with their contact information. If you're looking for information for a smaller firm, they may not have that directly, but you can always call the main line number or you can always email an information number and you can ask directly to be put in contact with the person handling hiring or internships or anything that you're looking for and they will put you in contact. So it it doesn't take necessarily as much digging um, Some you know, if the information is not readily available, but Calling the main number, even in light of COVID, it's being redirected. Nobody's not answering the phone. So you can still get in touch with people, um, even despite the current climate and situation. And I know a lot of firms are posting a header that's saying in COVID, this is where you go. So if you're going on a different website that might have multiple clicks on there, it's better to go to the source and, and see what the contact information is. One of the things, like just to pop in very quickly um, that I might recommend along with that. If you um, send an email to like what Jess was saying, if you find the managing partner or find somebody, when you're reaching out, sending an email and including your resume, um, because, you know, I got to tell you, picking up the phone for us sometimes it's, you know, we've got enough to do um, and, and you know, just quickly opening an email and being able to read a resume, even if we don't have, um, you know, specific firms don't have the ability to take on either an intern or something along those lines or an extra associate, we might know of somebody within our networks that can, and we can send a quick email with your resume already and forward it on to that person. And it's a very easy way of getting yourself out there without really having to do as much work. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, send all your stuff to me and I'll do that for you. I don't have the time. But, um, you know, I think that I speak on behalf of a lot of other attorneys that sometimes, you know, picking up the phone is a good way to do it, but sending an email and including your resume or including a cover letter and resume of what it is that you can bring to the table is great because we're not just calling some random person and having no idea what they can do for us or what they can provide to our firm. Um, so yeah, thanks. Well, that's very helpful. Thank you. I know Daniel, you're on the call as well. Um, I wonder if you wanted to jump in a bit, um, talk about your involvement with YLS and um, you know, your your thoughts on all these topics. Yeah, no, I was actually going to jump in at some point after uh, uh, Liz and Jess because I I can almost attest to the practice that they've uh, described here. I am currently wrapping up my first clerkship on the Court of Appeals um, this year. Now that I'm a year out of law school, um, and I'm moving on to a second clerkship here in about two weeks. Um, and I can tell you that. When I was in law school, when I was in your shoes doing uh, internships or what have you, um, a lot of the, the foundation that I've laid this year and, and for the year to come began as a, an email or just reaching out to somebody who was clerking for a judge I was interested in or somebody who was working at a firm that I had um, an OCI or, or some interview scheduled uh, with. And I can tell you both being on the end of reaching out to people um, and now being in the clerkship and, and having interviewed some candidates for upcoming terms, uh, I've never come across an individual who was unwilling to help or unwilling to just talk about their position um, or what they went through to get through um, into a new job or into a clerkship. Um, and I've found, uh, as a couple of people have said, the Maryland law community is relatively small. Um, the MSBA, I think, is, is a pretty good cohort of, of attorneys. Um, but the, the bounds and the reach of what uh, each individual attorney has uh, in their own uh, arsenal is is quite expansive. So uh, whether it's just emailing somebody cold and saying, I have an interest in this, can we schedule a chat? Um, or, I mean, pre-COVID, uh, I was able to go out to a couple lunches and have a couple sit downs with people. Um, I found them to be very informational um, and more often than not, they turned into something tangible. Um, and that's, uh, partly how I attribute getting to where I am today. So uh, I guess in some, I'm trying to say that it is, it can be daunting to reach out, especially to somebody cold or, or somebody that you've never met. Um, but I found them, uh, especially in the Maryland law community to be very receptive to law students and those who are just getting underway um, and are, are, I think could be very helpful to jumpstarting your career. 
Um, that's why I'm now uh, I'm trying to become a more involved member of the MSBA. Uh, and I wish I, like some of you, had been involved as a law student even one or two or two years earlier, uh, because there is a lot of great value to it here. So, yeah, something I something I, I wanted to piggyback on that, um, just because um, it's something that I've come to to learn uh, the longer that I've I'm in practice. But also, besides networking with you know, people who are already out there and people who are already working and, and see more seasoned attorneys as well. Never, networking with your peers is really going to be crucial during law school. And I know that's going to be a little bit more complicated with in light of COVID, but building relationships with your classmates is going to also be instrumental down the line. Um, and when you're looking to lateral to firms or, you know, move to other positions, because you know, off of what Daniel just said, you know, the Maryland law community, um, for better or worse, is small. And, you know, when firms are opening up and looking for positions, they almost always will go internally and ask for recommendations from the people who are there. Who do you know who can fill this role? And a lot of positions get filled that way before they go public. And so it, it can be more valuable than you think building really strong relationships with your peers uh, while you're in law school. Um, and you have no idea who's going to be in what position later in life and what they're going to be able to offer you and what they're going to be able to help you with. So um, I know that they say it when you're in law school that, you know, their reputation can, you know, speaks wonder, you know, it will, uh, you know, the, the reputation you build for yourself in law school really supersedes law school. And in Maryland, that is that is very true. Um, but it's also great because if you have an opportunity to really, um, you know, set yourself up to be someone that people can, you know, talk to and trust and people appreciate your work ethic that will stick with you, that will continue to be your reputation. So um, as much as it can be intimidating reaching out to people who are seasoned attorneys, people who are already in practice, it can be less intimidating reaching out to your peers who are maybe as novice as you are. And so to that end, that can still work to your benefit later as well. And in terms of getting to the right person and having kind of the right contact within a certain section or practice area, you know, Angela is, is basically an encyclopedia of all of the attorneys <laughs> and paralegals and law students. Um, and I can see a lot of heads nodding yes here. Um, she's worked with every single section um, and she's been with the MSBA for several years. And so she's a, a very wonderful connector. Um, so I would say feel free to reach out to her or to me um, if you have an interest in a certain area and you'd like to do, you know, like a virtual coffee or something with one of our members or section leaders, we'd be really happy to put that together because like Jess was saying, even just getting together with a couple of your peers on a Zoom or a hangout like this um, can, can really just provide a little bit of a different perspective and a little bit of that, I'm not in this alone, you know, someone else is, is in this with me. Um, even if they're in a different different space. Um, so I do think that there's a lot of really good opportunity for that. Um, and I know we also have um, a few other students um, that are on this call. So I'd love to just open it up for the last few minutes to hear from you all. And if you had any questions or comments for um, some of the individuals who've already um, presented and given some tips here. Would love to hear from you. I think we have Renee and Marianne and Kiara. So if, if any of you'd like to jump in or um, have any questions or comments. I'm Renee, looking back through my notes. <laughs> Renee, I think you're muted. Okay. Um, I really don't have questions, but I one, I wanted to thank all of you for your time. Um, it is a little, you know, I, I think as a student, it's a little unnerving. We're going into another, you know, full semester. I had half of the spring semester remote, all of summer, and now all of fall and possibly all of spring. So it's a little daunting to think that I might be finishing my um, schooling without ever setting foot. Oh, I froze somehow without ever setting foot into the um, the building again. But it, it's 
good to hear some networking suggestions and just suggestions for continuing focus and motivation. Thank you. And, and I would also add that one of the things that Jess had pinpointed this and, and Daniel and Liz as well, you know, what you're seeking and what your strengths are, those are really helpful to just share with, with groups even like this. Um, if you have a specific area of law that you studied a lot or that you have an interest right. in, um, even just mentioning that um, in groups like this, I, I've seen a lot of really good connections you know, be finishing a program and then people want to stay on another 20 minutes and have a dialogue. And I think that that's really great. Melanie's definitely been involved in that. So um, Renee, if you have any of that or want to share, you know, offline is, is totally fine too. Um, yeah, I'm happy to share. I had um, a long career at T. Rowe Price and I'm a certified financial planner and I've always been um, in love with the area of trust and estate planning. So when I left T. Rowe, um, I'm living a lifelong dream of attending law school. It was one of my biggest regrets. So I would love to do trust and estates when I get out. I will say, however, though, that I did an externship over the summer in family law, and I took family law with Jamie Abrams, somebody who's new to UB. And I would never have thought I was interested in family law and um, a light bulb went off this summer. So I have a feeling I'm going to be somewhere, maybe a combination of trust and estates and family law. Well, on that point, <laughs> Eleni and I can definitely have some conversations with you. And I will also tell you that, um, you know, there are some elements of family law that do trickle in um, to estate planning and vice versa. So you don't necessarily have to feel like you need to choose. Um, okay. In some capacities, you'll be able to kind of do both. But if you want any additional information or um, just some guidance in that, um, Eleni's on and I am as well. And I'm happy to, I'll put my information in the chat so okay. that you have it That'll as well. Great. So you can always feel free to, to contact. Um, I won't say, speak for Eleni, but I'm sure you can contact her as well. She'd be willing to. Thank you. Thank you both. Thanks, Renee. And if I can just say from, from our perspective, from the Law Career Development Office, um, we have a lot of resources that support students when they're trying to do these kind of reach outs and networking. Um, we're big proponents of informational interviews. Um, and in our handbook, we even have like sample emails that you can use when you're reaching out after you've done one of these events and you want to then reach out to someone. We have some, some sample language. Not, we don't really care if you lift it or not. It's an email. Um, but to just kind of get the conversation um, started. Um, and I also just want to mention that we have a new jobs platform called UB Law Connect. I don't know if our students have, have logged on to it yet, but um, we're excited about it because we're connecting our events, events like MSBA's event. You can get on UB Law Connect and you'll see a bunch of events from bar associations. We'll start populating it. So there's a place where you can go and, um, and see what's happening in the legal community apart from going to all the different um, websites. So, um, you know, the LCDO, we're virtual, but we're um, working hard every day. And I think that this year is really going to be focused on individual counseling um, because students kind of need that individual support and that connection. So for anyone who's on this call who hasn't met with an LCDO counselor recently, um, particularly if you're a third year, um, please make an appointment. You can do that through UB Law Connect and we're happy to support you. Great, thank you, Alyssa. Um, I just want to make sure I gave everyone time. Kiara, I saw that you had unmuted. I just wanted to see if you wanted to chime in. Yes, thank you. I had to look through my notes again to figure out what points I wanted to ask. Um, I actually had a question about the, uh, what was the access to justice with the Attorney General? I heard uh, Pernita uh, mention that. And I had a question. Um, I actually really wanted to connect with um, Daryl and Pilar um, in terms of what they were doing in terms of diversity and inclusion, because um, that's a really, really um, area of interest for me. Um, I, I've done um, a lot of activism in Baltimore for the past seven years. Um, so I'm really interested in 
trying to make all of that connect um, in term, uh, especially with um, my union experience. I've been working for uh, AFG as a union rep, um, as well as working for um, the federal government. Um, so I'm really interested in seeing how I can tie everything. And I actually was trying to figure out which section to join, but um, you guys kind of answered that for me with the YLS. So I'll be sure to um, to connect with you guys as well. So this was really, really helpful. I really appreciate it, especially with us being fully um, online. This is so bizarre, but um, I, I'm I'm ready. I'm, I'm I'm ready to see what this journey is like. And if I can just say, Kiara, um, kudos to you for in 1L, already networking, <laughs> already putting yourself out, talking in front of all these people you don't know. I think you're going to do great. Right? <laughs> Thank you, Alyssa. I see it in your future. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah, I have no fear. None. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we talked over the summer. I remember. Yes, yes. It was awesome. Okay. I have to call you too. No. Okay, please do. Go ahead. I will. Absolutely. Yeah, Kiara, just to chime in real quick, this is Daryl. Um, thank you for, for being interested in diversity and inclusion. And, you know, as a law student, I think it would be valuable for us to kind of talk and, and follow up. Um, you know, as as um, as Pilar mentioned, you know, we, we kind of have uh, a lot of ambition as far as what we want to accomplish as a committee this year and, and going forward. Um, so we, we definitely want to see kind of where law students who are the future of the, the bar um, kind of stand on certain things. Um, but to just kind of preview some of the, the programs that we're anticipating for this year, um, one of them actually pertains to um, facilitate, facilitating trainings um, that relate to DNI related issues, um, one, one of which being um, representation of, of you know, peaceful protesters um, who may be facing some legal ramifications that, that you know, to evaluate whether they're, um, you know, in, in sync with the constitution or, or not. Um, so, you know, that would be something that, you know, if we would like to open up to others as well. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, we should follow up. Um, I'll put my email in the chat as well and, um, you know, hope to connect with you further on that. Yes, please Thank reach out. So we would much. love to have you. Yes, I'm so interested in um, seeing how that goes because I, I know a lot of people who are, I believe they're still on the front lines as we speak um, with protests. I was like, I'm just going to sit this one out and get ready for school to start. <laughs> I, don't, I didn't need to get arrested right before school starts. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Angela, do you mind uh, sharing the relationship with Access to Justice and MSBA and how they're tied together for her? Sure. Um, so, yeah. oh, sorry. Okay. So, for Access to Justice, um, Rena Shaw is the executive director. Um, she started with us. Shally, would you want to say like early this year or last year? Last year. Last year. Oh, did you want to say more, Shelly? Go ahead, Angela. No, I just wanted to give a oh, little background on access to justice. I think that was what the question was, right? Yes. So the access to justice um, is a partner entity with the MSVA, and um, it focuses on civil access to justice issues. And when COVID-19 began, um, they went into full force into overdrive because there were so many new issues that were affecting civil litigants. Um, and the system was really stressed and still is stressed regarding evictions, immigration issues, domestic violence. You know, every, every avenue has been impacted. And so, um, the Attorney General requested that the Access to Justice Commission put together a task force, and they're meeting several times throughout the rest of this year, um, focusing on some of these specific issues. And Rena is our liaison, um, and she is heading up that task force. And I think Pranita mentioned that she's been involved doing some good work. There's a lot of social media activism and outreach to let people know what the um, task force is doing, and what kinds of information they're looking for. Um, so I think, Pranita, you might also be a good connect 
um, with Kiara here to follow up and maybe she could also get involved with some of the work that Rena's doing because they do have a very busy, busy year ahead. Yes, so I, I just put my email in the chat so um, you can see that or she, you can see that and reach out to me. Yeah, I got it. Thank you so much. We'd be happy to connect with Rena as well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, well, I see that we're, we're at an hour um, and I, I know that people have maybe other Zoom, Zoom and Hangouts to go to or maybe to go for an afternoon walk. Um, but I did want to just stay on uh, for a little bit longer. If anybody wants to continue connecting or chatting, um, feel free. There's a lot of great resources and wonderful to see everyone's face here today. Um, and we will we will stay connected. Um, and I'll like I said, we'll stay on the chat so you can capture what you need from the chat. Um, and if there are any follow up questions, feel, please feel free to reach out to me or Angela. Um, we're happy to get you connected to anyone that's on this on this call. <laughs>